Sports Influence. According to reports, India's HNIs are increasingly investing in luxury assets overseas and keeping pace with the growing demands, India Sotheby's International Realty is expanding its footprint in India. They recently launched their Mumbai office to cater to the growing demands of luxury homes in the city. We bring you some highlights from this one-of-a-kind global luxury realty event. Uh, it's wonderful to be here in Mumbai. Um, to celebrate this wonderful occasion, which is uh, really the opening of uh, the India Sotheby's International Realty Office in Mumbai. So congratulations, uh, Sabah, Amit, Ashwin, the whole India team uh, for their hard work. Uh, I just want to give them a heartfelt congratulations uh, for opening this new office uh, in Mumbai. We actually were the trailblazer. Uh, to some degree with Amit and Ashwin and their team opening their first India office in Delhi uh, which was about three and a half years ago. So I really want to give them a congratulations for that as well. They've done a fantastic job. We have about 40 different real estate companies uh, who are affiliated with Sotheby's International Realty here with us uh, today uh, and this week from 11 different countries. This is really a testament to the global network that we've created at Sotheby's International Realty. So 14 years ago, um, we didn't have any you know, affiliates per se. We had some company-owned offices. Uh, we had 14 of those. We didn't really have a network to speak of. But we set out to create something special. And today, I'm happy to report that as of the end of last year, we have over 930 offices in 70 different countries as well. So we're doing our part to publicize uh, the great economic opportunity uh, here in India. When we started our operations, we saw that there are about 30 million non-resident Indians and uh, we kind of uh, mapped them in terms of which are the countries and which are the cities which are uh, where the non-resident Indians are heavily uh, populated. And uh, that's when we started uh, to see that our major countries of focus are the US, uh, UK and of course the UAE. Sotheby's India is delighted to welcome you this evening. At Sotheby's, we've been uniting collectors with world-class works of art since 1744. That's almost 300 years. We just completed 100 years on New Bond Street. We're new in Bombay. With Sotheby's International Realty, you now have access to the world's most remarkable properties and those in India. Great art deserves a great home. And extraordinary homes can never do without inspiring art. At Sotheby's, the auction house, and Realty, we just did a double whammy. We have doubled our strength and the spirit of Art de Vivre, and what remains constant and at the heart of our partnership is our clients' uncompromising desire for the finest and the best in art and real estate, all elements of an extraordinary life. At Sotheby's, we try and give you just that. Delhi, Mumbai, Goa, Gurgaon. A lot of people are going in for holiday homes nowadays. So at Sadhubi's Realty, we also focus on that piece. After the successful launch in Mumbai, India Sadhubi's International Realty kick-started the second edition of the two-day Global Realty Conclave 2018 in New Delhi. The event saw presence of the who's who from the luxury living space, be it h and industry leaders and global experts. Over the last year, we have grown uh, North India to India Sotheby's international reality with a second office now opened in Mumbai and with plans to open several more around India and in key metro destinations. We will also be soon expanding in the overseas uh, in the region and uh, Philip will uh, detail that out for us. 
this robust uh, expansion marks the firm positioning of Sadhavi's reality to avail the remarkable opportunity for onward growth that India and the region has to offer. In this note, I would like to invite uh, Philip White to address the audience and share his valuable views on global opportunities as well as uh, vision for India Sadhavi. I just want to congratulate uh, Amit uh, Goyal and Ashin Shadav for all their great work in establishing India Sotheby's International Realty. We've accomplished a lot in the last 14 years. Um, last year, 2017, um, our annual turnover, our annual sales volume uh, throughout the world was $108 billion. We are in 70 countries uh, at this point, uh, 70 different countries. Um, certainly India is a very important one in that um, group. And we have over 20,000 real estate sales professionals uh, that work uh, under the brand name uh, in the 70 countries on a global basis. So uh, we're very proud to be here uh, with you for the conclave, and thank you for having us. Sotheby's is a company that uh, has been in existence since 1744 and is the oldest stock exchange. Every day I come to work, I think, wow, I work in a company that's been in existence longer than the United States, 1744. Can you imagine that? A company that's been around for generations. And I'm very proud to represent the ideals of quality, luxury, um, client service that is what we deal with every day. And the collaboration between Sotheby's and Sotheby's International Realty. So thank you very much. I must say that real estate, somewhere down the line we decided we'd get into real estate because it seems to be a money spinner and I must tell you that I had hair before I started the real estate business. The, it's a very challenging business but the excitement today is that We've, it, it's, been, it's always been a cyclical business, so it's, it's a cyclical business, it goes up and down and the good news is that we are at the bottom of the cycle, so the only way you can go is up. And I think it has, I must compliment the CEO of Sotheby's for not only moving from 8 billion to 108 billion, but also for his sense of perfect timing. Because as Warren Buffett said, you know, the wise people think of getting into the business at the low cycle and the, and the not so wise ones get on the higher cycle because this is the only way it can go up. When my father bought his first house, it was a question of that you, he needed a roof over his head for his family. Today, the younger people, when they buy houses, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's lifestyle. It's luxury, it's comfort. And that's where players like Sotheby's will play a very important role. So, friends, interesting times. Keep your checkbook ready. Sotheby's will get you, hopefully, not only the best product, but also get you a best deal. God bless you and congratulations, Sotheby's. I must congratulate uh, CII uh, to uh, take a lead in a sector which in India we don't often recognize the worth of. Uh, luxury is seen to be something which, uh, uh, despite what Arun said, uh, we don't really relate to very much, but as I was talking to um, uh, Saba, and as we know from the from long time, that uh, luxury is a sector which can actually drive a very, the economy and become an engine uh, of, uh, of economic growth in the, in the, in the in, in countries, and I'm hoping uh, that this will also begin to happen in, this, uh, in, in our country. And um, Arun, I can't uh, say how glad I am that you said that uh, Sotheby's 
time their entry perfectly because uh, that for me means that India is perhaps entering what I call the Goldilocks period of its growth going forward. Tell me a bit about your business plan. Are you focused on your Indian buyers also as a new market into Miami? Being an Indian myself, I understand the culture, the concerns, and uh, what an Indian would need. I'm looking forward to catering to that. An event that gave a bird's eye view into the world of luxury realty, with every facet being discussed and deliberated upon. Eminent industry stakeholders shared the dives to discuss strategies that are thriving in some of the world's most competitive markets for capturing new business in this very space. I wanted to, um, to start with you, Ranjit. We started uh, talking a little bit about, well, we know very much about the UAE market. You and your team have done incredibly well around your region that historically have never, ever given an exclusive tour brand. How did you do that? Well, I think that's, that's the power of Sotheby's. Um, I'm also very new to the brand. We've merged uh, our operations with Sotheby's uh, about five, four or five months back. And uh, we've already started to uh, see some fruits of, of the association of the merger. Uh, we've been able to onboard a couple of developers uh, because obviously they uh, understand the potential and the reach that uh, Sotheby's International Realty platform brings of exposure that uh, they gain and obviously because of uh, the lifestyle and the luxurious brand that we are, uh, people do want to get associated with us. That's terrific. Rashba, you are in a market which is an incredibly vibrant market for new development, Miami, Florida. Tell me a bit about your business plan. Are you focused on your Indian buyers also as a new market into Miami? You're absolutely right. It's the latter. I am focused. I've just come into Miami two years ago, joined Sotheby's. I'm reaching out to the Indian market. Being an Indian myself, I understand the culture, the concerns, and uh, what an Indian would need. I'm looking forward to catering to that and uh, connecting with the Indians here as well as from the, in, from the Indian end in Miami, bringing them into India in case they have any needs here. I'm working with both Amit and Ashwin to have a mutual partnership in that. And yes, that's exactly what I'm focusing on. That's great. And continuing on that conversation, Petra, um, you are now, first of all, welcome to the brand. Um, you, you also are dealing with a uh, branded property in, in, with Colombo One with ITC. Um, how does that help you sell the project? Because it would be a unique perspective on your end. I have to say that the Colombo One project uh, by ITC certainly picks up the qualities that we were looking to build in in both Zaha Hadid's and uh, Aston Martin's development and do not fall back by any account. They're not as famous, the name is not as famous as, as, as the, uh, the other ones, but they certainly deliver on quality, and this will truly be a very special building. Uh, we are sure the future icon of uh, uh, Sri Lanka, and, and that is uh, uh, actually the, 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 the power of the brand. When you do something so right that it becomes iconic, um, really talking about where your feeder markets come from. So, um, as, as we said, we are in over 70 countries now. We have a very interconnected network. What sort of best practices have you used, really, when your respective, I'm going to ask everyone the same question, in your respective regions, to really use the network for your feeder markets as far as uh, best practices are concerned and things of that nature? We are slightly different animal in, in terms of how we originated. We are, um, our group is the biggest property developer in Mauritius. Um, we were an in-house sales company that evolved into uh, the Sotheby's International Realty brand. And, um, and the, the reason we went that route was specifically to use the network. Um, we, our feeder markets are mainly uh, Europe, the UAE, and South Africa. Um, more than 60% uh, of our buyers come from South Africa and, and um, France. Sure. So those are our two obvious ones, but 
um, you know, we're really driving hard now to build relationships with the rest of the network. And, and hence, the, uh, probably the main reason I'm here is to, is to really connect with, with India, with the UAE, um, and, and the, other brand, the other offices and regions which are feeder markets to, to Mauritius. The final session on day one threw light on some of the most popular destinations for residential real estate investment from the Indian investor's perspective. Let me tell you something about Dubai. Dubai is completely tax-free as far as the, your income, your profit, your capital gains, short-term, long-term, whatever, it's tax-free. Nada. There's no taxes in Dubai. That's the most important USP. The other ones that I'd like to quickly go through are the price per square feet is extremely low. I'll go on to a comparison with other cities, but we are at around $4,500 a square meter. Compare that to Hong Kong, which is at $29,000 a square meter, or Mumbai, which is at $7,222 a square meter. That's extremely low compared to any other major city in the world. All transactions are regulated by RERA. Every transaction, whether it's in the ready space or in off-plan new developments, it is all into escrow. There is no risk of any investment that you make in Dubai real estate or UAE real estate. I'd just like to end with a quote that Sheikh Mohammed mentioned whilst opening the Dubai Museum of the Future. He said the future belongs to those who can imagine it, design it, and execute it. While others try to predict what the future is, we create it. Thank you. Andy, let's come to the Canadian market. We have, we have New York, we have Seattle, we have Dubai. These are all uh, destinations that have arrived. You are hard selling uh, Canada to Indian buyers today. Let's hear it uh, about what, what is it, whom are you targeting and why do they come to Canada to buy? Well, I think um, Canada is summed up uh, with all the things going on in the world. We're boring. Um, <laughs> we, we, we don't have big swings in the market one way or the other. Our political system, whether it's a more conservative government or liberal government, it's still pretty even keeled. And our bank, banking system is, uh, is, is very stable, um, weathered uh, the financial crisis um, extremely well because of practices that put in place in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, so we're just a nice, stable environment for investment. And I think that's been a big uh, draw to many international investors. Uh, Jonathan, talk to us about the Indian investment into the uh, British market. I mean, firstly, wow. Um, I'm impressed by all of these centers. Thankfully, I don't have to really uh, promote London because London is, London is very similar to New York. It's been there for the last 30, 40, 50 years as the number one or two. We can debate that later. Uh, destination to invest you know globally it will continue to be number one or two for the next 30 40 50 years the, the reasons why are supply and demand fundamentally we need to be building 50,000 new homes a year we are delivering no more than 15 to 20,000 and haven't done so for the last 10 years so when any market is underpinned by that you then add on to the global appeal that London has it's again one of and I might argue the uh, financial center of the world in that we can deal with both, uh, both Asian markets and the American markets all in one day. Education, lifestyle. If I was, came in as an investor, what kind of property should I buy and what, what is, should be the size of my investment so that I may get best returns? Kevin? Usually investors coming in from India or China specifically, uh, they always start off at one bedrooms and I think it's a mistake. Mm -hmm. Uh, because two-bedroom and three-bedroom is the sweet spot. Uh, you should look at spending uh, $3 million plus. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and certain cities you want to purchase because you're getting a great rate of return at that moment. New York City is really your exit strategy that you're going to get the huge bump. And I would think uh, Seattle is the same way and, and Toronto. So how I long do you hold that investment to get a good uh, exit? I'll, I'll try and answer it simply. Um, I really believe in the growth rate of downtown Seattle market fundamentals. We don't have 
a subway system yet. They're working on a $55 billion transportation package, which will help link outlying neighborhoods to downtown, but that's going to be at least 10 years away. So I see nothing but, you know, the vertical growth of the market, and there's very few opportunities with the jobs um, that you see all being downtown to actually own uh, individual units. In a city of 80,000 residents downtown, guess how many resale condominiums are on the market right now? Less than 40. Wow. Less than 40. And so these pre-sale new construction developments that we're representing are, I think, the answer. You can purchase that home uh, with a 5% down payment today and not have additional payments until closing, say, in late 2019 or 20. So I think the homes under $700,000, uh, if you can get a hold of one in pre-sale, are going to be very profitable. A perfect showcasing and networking opportunity in an immersive environment of the creme de la creme stakeholders in luxury real estate. The global luxury realty conclave paved the way for growth and opportunities in this sector. What people want as far as uh, their fantasy home, you know, when they have all that money, what all do they, what do they want? In my experience, I think uh, what what anybody who has the affordability is looking at is, of course, all the luxuries that come with uh, Indians being now global citizens.